Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here at my next uh, Legend of Korra book review. This one's going to be for the Legend of Korra Book 3 Change uh, Art of the Animated Series Art Book. So, finally got my copy, or had to order it online, couldn't get a day of release, but uh, yeah, the book is out basically everywhere right now, it's available online, it should be available in normal bookstores as well. But uh, first, as usual, let's uh, just take a look through the art books that we have for Avatar so far. So, of course, right here we have the Avatar The Last Airbender art book. We only got one of them to cover the entire series. So that's that. Next, after that, we got the Legend of Korra Book 1 Air art book. Pretty nice. Following that, just a few months ago, we had the uh, Book 2 Spirits art book. Again, really good. And now, last but not least... If this doesn't just fall over, and it just did, <laughs> we have the Book 3 Change art book, which, as you can see, it looks very nice. Korra, hair down on the cover, uh, Air Temple in the background, Northern Air Temple, of course. That's what the front of the cover looks like. As usual, we're going to have Mike, Brian, and Joaquim de Santos uh, giving their comments as we see the art. There's the spine of the book, standard as usual, and here's the back. Got a quote, but we'll look at that in more detail later on. Kai on the back. Yeah, let's just get these other art books out of the way. I'll just com I won't be showing them off to compare them. I'll just be um, kind of referring to what those books did and didn't do and so on. So, okay, let's get into this book. So here we go. The cover, as I said, pretty nice. Maybe not the best image to show off what book uh, three change is, but what they, they what they've been going for with the cover of the art books is Cora on the fr on the front with one or two key things in the background. Nothing else, no, nothing fancy for the cover of these art books, which is uh, pretty nice. But uh, here's the back. And we get so here's quote. It's the dawning of a new age, the end of the White Lotus, and soon the end of the Avatar. I think that's Zaheer from the first episode. Zaufu is one of the images in the back. Kai, and uh, yeah, just it explains what the book is about. It's good. It's going into the creative process behind the series. Mike, Brian, Joaquin de Santos, and some reviews. The book cost thirty four ninety nine US dollars, and realistically, it's going to cost you somewhere around that online. Online from Amazon, the book will probably be a little bit cheaper. I got mine for thirty four euro, uh, which is uh, pretty good. If I got it in a comic book store and they release, it would have been thirty five, but. Uh, Saved a euro, not too bad. Um, but yeah, let's get actually into the book. So we start off as usual. Standard inside cover is just the kind of black and white uh, map of the Avatar world, blank page. It's always very interesting to see what the first uh, image is. And this time we get a really interesting image of uh, Ming Hua there. Very interesting kind of style there. Uh, again, the kind of back, uh, on the back cover, we had this image, uh, just a little alternate version of it. Here's the title page, and a little sketch of the Air Kids and uh, Korra, plus Kai. And just saying who's involved. Very nice. And then I, I, I kind of like how they do this in the art book, just as they're going through the opening credits, kind of, for who made the book. They just have sketches here and there. There's Kaya, there's Zaheer and Pali, there's Bo Lin swimming, and there's uh, Huan, Wing, and Wei. The Bay Fongs, and then obviously here's the chapter listings, and all it is is some introductions, some paragraphs from my, uh, Mike, Brian, and Joaquin, a chapter on every uh, episode, and then a uh, chapter for ancillary art at the, at the end. The book is 184 pages long, which is the exact same length as the book two art book, which was a for, which had 40 extra pages than the book one art book. So it's effectively, this is the same length as the Avatar The Last Airbender art book. So it means that book one air has the shortest art book. But uh, we'll see as we go on if uh, the pages do anything for the book. But yeah, some longer introductions than usual for this book. Uh, very interesting, especially Joaquin gets a full page and then Mike and Brian had the uh, pages to themselves here. But yeah, it's pretty interesting here. At the top we get... Uh, <laughs> Joaquin just drawn as a normal guy, uh, Bolin Mike edition, and then Mako uh, Brian edition. That's pretty nice. And yeah, they're just, uh, they're just they just give a little intro on Book 3 Change. There's nothing massively fancy on here. They just talk about how uh, basically getting the final two books, that's 
they obviously had the first book, then they got book two, and and then, you know, before book one even aired, then they got the final two books because they realized that we've still got a, some ideas to go. We can finish this off really well with two more books, and they got it. That's kind of what they talk about here. Joachim's is more focused on just how honoured he was to actually work on the show, so they're fairly self-explanatory, not much. I'll say it again, I I do wish we continued the thing that was in the Avatar art book and also the Book One Air art book, early development chapter. I get that the whole book in general is going to involve the pre-production of the show with the concept art and stuff like that, but I like that early chapter in the book just to show that, you know, it has a little bit more words in it, a little bit more uh, actual talking from Mike and Brian, explaining where the ideas for Book 3 change came from, rather than what we get in the book, which is primarily them giving comments on the various pieces of art, and from time to time giving insight into the creative process. And, and I think that that's been a problem with all of the core art books in general, that they maybe don't have an, a, enough text. Because if you actually compare any of the core art books to the Avatar art book, the amount of writing text involved is a lot less. There's much more focus on the art and just little annotations describing everything. But uh, yeah, let's go on. Uh, again, I, I always love these uh, kind of uh, opening double splash pages for the chapters. So this is the episode one of Breath of Fresh Air, K301. And we get this nice image here as the chapter with the kind of uh, Red Lotus kind of logo that we've kind of got for um, the logo for the book. And then in the background it's just a two-page spread background piece of art that's essential to the first episode. So Kyoshi Bridge is essential to the first episode. So I really like that we get that um, here. It's really cool. Um, and that's for all of the chapters. It's a really cool thing that these art books do. And we start off straight away with a kind of focus on Zaheer and then Da uh, and some of the, the hedgehog spirit and stuff like that. Again, they don't really go too much in depth on the characters. Like, they don't give you any extra information basically on any of the characters, really. And for Zaheer, Pali, Gazan and Mingwa, as probably some of the least developed villains that we got in Korra, it's a bit of a problem. And they constantly reference that, that, you know, we could have almost done a whole series uh, explaining uh, how these characters came together and stuff like that, and it's just teasing constantly when it's stuff like this where they can actually give us a little bit of extra information, but they don't. Um, and yeah, it's just a really nice look at the kind of character designs and, you know, the Ryuki Hyun and all these um, other artists that you maybe don't hear about as much as Mike and Brian's involvement in the show, and it's just um, really nice to see that. Uh, yeah, Angela uh, Song M Muller, who I think is the artist who does the How to Draw Korra book, which was actually decent, I reviewed it on my channel. But yeah, pretty nice stuff there, and then, yeah, you, you, we get some uh, storyboard stuff. And what I will say, I've really noticed reading through this book, there is a lot, a lot of storyboard pages. And I think this is where the 40 extra pages came from in these books. I looked back on even the book, the book 2 art book, and there's there's not quite as many as there are in this book, but there's still a lot. Um, so there may, be, may have been 40, 40 extra pages in the book two and three art books, but a lot of it's just taken up with these storyboards. And while they're nice to see, definitely, they almost overuse them just to kind of fill in space in the book when, you know, that's nice to see, but you can sort of see it in completed in the show and the extras on the DVDs and stuff like that show you some of these storyboards. But what we really want to see is a lot more stuff like this. Like this is the background for Daw's shop, which is, you know, a very small scene in the first episode where Mako comes in and Daw's kind of breaking stuff with his air bending. Very nice. And stuff like this. Like they even specifically mention here like a page of spirits from the first episode when spirits are barely a part of the first book uh, this book of uh, Korra. It's just really nice to see some of these spirit designs uh, in full um, and how kind of cool they look. Um, and they even mention it, Mike mentions in this little annotation here, yeah, although the spirits don't play as big a role in book three as they did in book two, we still wanted them to have a presence in the world, especially during the spirit wild scenes. And 
definitely, it, it ultimately is probably Korra's biggest problem as a show, is that it completely underutilizes the spirits that they introduced so heavily in book two. And uh, yeah, some really nice background stuff, some of the other key parts from the opening episode, Kyoshi Bridge once again. Um, oh, here's a really nice line. Like some of this more technical stuff, I really like that they go to the effort of explaining to you how this kind of fancy white lotus prison door actually works, and like you push it in, it spins, the doors then open, stuff like that. Just it, there's so much detail goes into the show. It really makes you appreciate it um, and stuff like that. So yeah, another two pages of storyboards, and you're starting to see where a lot of the extra pages come in. And here's um, some more kind of uh, key animation stuff. And one actually interesting thing that this book does talk about is that this is the first book of Korra where Studio Reve, or E-V-E, -E, worked on Korra. Now, I know a lot of people have a lot of praise for Studio Mur, and really Studio Reve is not something we hear about too much. I'm not even sure if they're listed in the credits too much. But they basically came in for book three and four to help Studio Mur, because there's obviously the whole issue with Mur, Studio Mur in that they did all of book one. And then they decided to do the boondocks like season two or three instead of Korra book two and only came back on later to do like half of those episodes because they were worried that Studio Piero might mess things up and ruin the reputation. And so they came back but they realized that they needed help to do such a complicated show and so they brought in this uh, studio that they were kind of friends with, Studio Reve. And that's a little interesting story that you get and this is uh, Reve storyboards that we have here of uh, Zaheer. Again, another really nice kind of splash page for the second episode, Rebirth. Obviously showing, uh, that's uh, Ming Wah's prison. And here's Gazan's uh, design stuff. Very nice, and Ming Wah's uh, stuff. And yeah, uh, there's actually one interesting piece of information here about Ming Wah, is that uh, Br Brian mentions that uh, her origin came from a grim joke pitch Mike and I had about Amon somehow surviving the explosion on the boat, but needing to bend water in place of his missing limbs. We never took that grizzly idea too seriously. It led to the creation of a waterbender born without arms in Ming Wah, so that's pretty nice. And yeah, it's really cool. These characters look so interesting. Like, they even mention here Gazan and his tattoos, and how, apart from the, his introduction episode, basically, you don't see them ever again. And it's just one of these things, like, why does he have tattoos? They seem very fancy and special for some reason, but why aren't they actually, like, um explored and it's really weird the way his um backstory isn't mentioned or any of them they even mention it i think with Pali that they give a hint at her backstory but don't go into it and it you know, is a pretty big problem um this is actually this these, these pages a couple of these throughout the book are something i really like about this art book is that because they visited a lot of bigger cities um you get to see a lot of the more just background characters who you just completely forget are in episodes but are essential to creating a realistic world it's really cool like these are the um citizens citizens of just some of the earth king the villages that they visit in the second episode and it's really interesting to look at how detailed the kind of character designs are they're all unique in their own way they're all, all wearing completely different clothes but they have to have the same sort of a style of you know villages or earth, earth kingdom and stuff like that but everyone looks unique and stuff like that. It's really cool. And they do this with a lot of the places they visit. Um, here's Kai's page. You know, th that's one thing that I'd maybe like them to do. Like, they just stick Kai on the same page as, like, Tuan. Like, Kai is an important character in this book. This is the uh, book where he gets most of his character development. And all that's mentioned about him is one little annotation. Like, I would like a whole page of text explaining where his character came from, where the character design came from, but no, all we get is one little piece of text and just a few images of him. It, it's a little bit annoying that they that they do that, that they spend so much of the book showing off these storyboards and not enough, like, what I think is most interesting to fans, and that's showing you the character focus and where that comes from. Again, like, you know, that's two and a half pages of storyboards here. It's, it's really kind of, you can see that they're spending a lot of time on this. Zuko and Druk and stuff like that are done in just one page and they don't even give too much detail on uh, going through his design. They do again confirm the piece of information with Druk here that uh, he is a descendant of Ran and Shaw but they don't confirm if he's uh, hatched from the egg, if it is an egg and stuff like that. 
I always like the um, these pages where they go into the kind of technical stuff about some of the CGI designs, like this uh, Future Industries airship that they travel around the world on. It's just the amount of detail they go into, like they explain how the elevator system in the airship works. Uh, really detailed, like here's like a cross section of how it looks inside. Here's how the ramp works and folds up. And this is sort of stuff you just kind of like take for granted. Like, do a lot of people even know that there is an elevator on this thing? It's really crazy. I mean, you gave a lot of attention to this, and I really appreciate that. And, and yeah, let's just start getting through this. Um, some interesting, uh, more storyboards, kind of key animations. Nice chibi page. And they do, they do make a nice comment in the annotations here about how all of these uh, faces were um, badges at uh, Comic-Con. And they mentioned that they probably shouldn't have made so many of them because everyone was, uh, no, I don't think anyone was able to collect them all. Again, here's another, one of these really nice opening chapter splash pages. Uh, here's, here's basically Mako and Bolin's family. This is a really cool page because really the focus is only on like, uh, here, Chow... Uh, Yin and two, and then we see some of the other characters in the background, like uh, Meng Meng and stuff like that, who we recently got the name of. Um, and here's uh, uh, Naoki, who again, name recently revealed, but not mentioned in this book. Why is that? But that's another thing that this art book can do. They can give names to characters who didn't have names in the show. We know we know San San mentioned in the show, uh, and here's this is the family portrait. R looks really cool, um, but. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of squandered potential. And here they just uh, go around. Talk a little bit about how they kind of uh, went about approaching bossing, say, you know, 70 years on, stuff like that. And uh, another thing, like here, Earth Queen Hu Ting, who's a fairly important character in the book, all the real focus you get on her is this, you know, top of the page, not even a quarter of the page devoted to her, and it's just three images of her face, uh, image of her... Um, just full character shot, and then the portrait that Grandma Yin has. Like, she gets the same amount of attention as Grand Secretary at Gun, or Gon, or however you want to pronounce his name. It's really weird. Here's a guy who actually gets some information on. We didn't know his name from the show, but it's revealed here that his name is Gombo, G-O-M-B-O. And again, look at this page. We get full shots of all of the other barbarian guys, the bandits on the motorbikes, who, when you watch that scene, you only know this guy because he talks. The other guys are just people that Asami and Korra are beating up. But here you see that they're all different. They've all got like unique weapons. They're all wearing different clothes. All got different faces. Really cool. And just really shows you the detail that goes into the show. More key animations. Uh, I, I should really like these. These are kind of more detailed uh, shots of uh, the characters like this where you kind of see really close up. Um, the how the characters are drawn and stuff like that it really shows you how detailed the animation style is. But yeah, let's quickly get start going through here. There's Pali, who um, they do mention a little bit about her backstory and stuff like that. Uh, again, they just they just say the stuff that was mentioned in the episode. As a young girl, she shows she she showed signs of being a combustion bender. A vicious warlord kidnapped her shortly thereafter and uh, trained her to become his own personal assassin. The hero rescued her from the warlord sometime in her teens. They fell in love and together they saw the life free from oppressive leaders. That's a backstory you could have went into. Like, show that episode. Show the connection where it came from between these two characters to show the relationship better. Show it to show that they suffered and why they all support this movement that's all about freedom and stuff like that. But no, you, you, you put it down to basically one sentence in one episode with these characters. And that's frustrating. Um, more of that. Again, look at these more shots of the crowds. Uh, more kind of people from like Bossing Say this time around. But this time, it's this page is lower ring citizens, and you can see that their kind of clothes are kind of messed up a little bit. Here's middle ring people. It's just like standard clothes. They're they're clean but not fancy. And then upper ring people. That's a really cool thing that they show here, just showing the, the design for the background characters. Metal Clan, I'm a little bit disappointed with this chapter, actually. They don't really go too much into depth on the design of Zaufu, which was such a unique looking place, but they do go into depth on the Beifong family. Here's the family portrait, uh, all of the various characters, Batar Jr., Batar Sr., Wing Wei, and so on. They give Kuvira a little uh, focus here, uh, Ai Wei, 
Derek, Julie, the chef. Um, but yeah, basically all we get in the chef is kind of like this page, the chapter, the start of the chapter and stuff like that. Uh, some information about some of the technology in Zaofu. Um They do confirm on this page that uh, this guy here is not Zaheer. They confirm that, that a lot of the speculation that Zaheer was part of the circus with Su Yin, but it's not. So that's interesting. Um, and yeah, that's interesting. Um, yeah. And yeah, they, they go a little bit in depth on Zaofu here, but uh, I feel like it should have been almost the focus of the chapter, just showing the the kind of domes and how they work and more in depth how to design them but not so much the show tough more storyboards um, and yeah there's a there's the red lotus is full character designs they're kind of finished ones once they're kind of uh, got their standard clothes young uh su yin and lin and this is there's, there's actually a nice in piece of information towards the bottom of the page here um it's uh, basically, what's it say? It says, uh, oh yeah, here, 12 year old uh, Su Yin and 18 year old Lin. And then it says here it is um, 16 year old Su and 22 year old Lin. And then it's 53 year old Toph. So it confirms that Toph had Lin when she was 31 and she had Su Yin when she was 37. So that's pretty interesting. Just get some nice uh, dates there, kind of uh, with the years Toph statue. Original airbenders, again, all, look at all these airbenders that are all unique. You just get a lot of stuff. This is one of my favorite pages in the book. It's basically the background to the cover, but without kind of core in the way, you really see how detailed this background image is. Very nice. Uh, more spirits up on the uh, mountain. You get a name for this guy as well, uh, the kind of main uh, bison hustler. His name is Gonbat, G-A-N-B-A-T. So that's a nice new name we get. And uh, yeah, let's get let's start getting through this. There's the core crew in their uh, pajamas designs. Um, here's the kind of design for the kind of Jeep, Iways Jeep and stuff like that. And more storyboards, some background shots of lava bending and stuff like that. Misty Palms Oasis. There's Mako in his uh, <laughs> Rain gear. Uh, the uh, wanted posters, more kind of crowd shots of the characters. You just see that, that, that there's some really cool stuff in this in this book, but also some stuff that's kind of like, oh look, one page of storyboards, two more pages of storyboards, two more pages of key animations. Now we're back to kind of full on concept art. Long live the queen. There's a. Uh, more designs for other characters. There's the captain, his hook. There's the uh, sand shark who, they don't like mention anything on if it's a spirit or animal. I think they just mention it's an animal. So nothing too fancy on him. Some of the uh, palace and the embossing say. Um, control room stuff. More storyboards, key animation. The ultimatum. There's the rings of the city. Um, yeah, we're getting towards the end of the book here, more storyboards, some really nice background shots here, more storyboards, Enter the Void, Tonrock and uh, Su Yin in kind of battle form, and then they get the designs of like the helmet, and there's a topographical map. There's some really nice stuff here if you really take your time to really kind of look through it. I don't want to like just kind of focus in on every single image of the book. But you get an idea about what they do focus on. And then they kind of go through some of the uh, other kind of artists that they brought on. Their different kind of approaches and styles to designing backgrounds for the show. More storyboards. Um, they do mention that, you know, they, they purposefully went for this kind of ominous, ambiguous introduction for Kavira when she spoke really for one of the first times. They're kind of setting up her role in book four. Venom of the Red Lotus. There's the obviously, cavern where the key action... So the key action takes place. Um, there's some background stuff. And yeah, we're getting towards the end of the book here. Um, there's a Janora's design when she just gets her tattoos. Very nice. Her cloak, Ryu, Opal, and their uh, airbender designs. Here's the uh, ceremony place where it take the air, air, air Temple Island where the ceremony takes place in kind of a very early concept, more background art type. Uh, 
some more stuff like that. More storyboards. This one is uh, obviously the scene towards the end when she's kind of uh, getting tortured. She's really affected by the poison, is hallucinating about the past villains. That's actually a pretty nice one. And then this is really cool. More Studio Reve key animations uh, showing uh, Korra. You really see, zooming in close, so much fine detail on these uh, pieces of art. It's very nice. And Ciliary Art is the final chapter, of course. And we get, I think that was one of the Comic Con posters. Um, and it's just some random uh, pieces of art. Eska and Desna. This weird one that even Mike comments. He has no idea what's going on, but it's a design by one of the guys at Studio Mirror, I think. Um, Sue, so Young, uh, Korra, and Naga. And again, I think we've seen some of these at like uh, the Comic Con panels. They showed us some of these uh, images, which is really nice. You see, the, there's the Rock Band one. We definitely saw that. This is a non-canon image because they confirmed that uh, Ming Wah here has arms, but uh, 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 Ryan confirms that uh, it's part of the character that she was born without arms. So this is uh, not fully true um, in that sense. So. It's an, it gives you an idea about what they were like when they were younger and that they've been together for a while, but it's not, no, no, by no means, like a canon, canon uh, picture like some of the other portraits that we get in the book. And then, last piece of art is this really nice kind of, chi almost, it's not quite chibi, but uh, it's almost a chibi style of just Korra, you know, defeating the Red Lotus like that. And that's the book. You know, it's, uh, it's good. I, ca I, I can't say I was like massively impressed with the book compared to say the book two art book i definitely say the book two art book was the better the book one art book probably better as well just because it was a more of an intro to our characters and stuff like that but it is good like it's not bad or anything like that but the reason i would maybe not recommend it right now is because coming out on wednesday is the rift hardcover edition and I would definitely prioritize anyone who actually wants to get both of these books. Get the Rift hardcover before you get this. Obviously, I, don't, I haven't got the book yet, the Rift hardcover, but I'd say just because the Rift is a new story, if you haven't read that story yet, the hardcover is the way to go in terms of getting it for the first time. Get that book before this one because that story is really good. It's probably the best the comics have been so far. Plus, you get concept art for the comics at the back of that book. You'll get annotations about the stuff in that book. This is a good book if you really like book three, if you really appreciate the art of the show. This is definitely worth getting, but because this book and the Rift hardcover are coming out so close together, I would definitely say that the book to get first is the Rift hardcover and then maybe track this down at a later date. This is not, like, essential. You need to get this as soon as possible because it's like the best book ever, but it's just a nice book to have as a collector of uh, Avatar merchandise and these books. Add it to the collection, of course, I'm going to be getting the book four art book as well. But this one for me, just in addition to just the fact that uh, I'd say it's the lower on the priority than the Rift hardcover, it also I, I felt was one of the weaker art books, because I, I had issues with it just with regards to like not, f not giving enough information on maybe the development of certain characters and more just being like Mike and Brian more being like this is what this image is and not really going into depth about what exactly it's showing and describing stuff. The books, that, these uh, core art books I feel need more text, more descriptive stuff about them but if you're if all you want from this book is just to see a lot of amazing art from book three this is exactly what you want. Um, of course, like I know a lot of people purposefully just buy these books just for any extra new information. I basically told you all of the new information that there is available in this book. There's not a massive amount, uh, but there is some little bits here and there. But it's primarily, it's a book like if you like the art of the show, this book is completely for you. If you really like book three, you're going to enjoy the book. But uh, I definitely think that the book two art book is probably the best core art book we've got so far. Just because it was definitely the most visually interesting book with the focus on the spirits and uh, stuff like that. While this one, for me, the most oppressive thing about this art book is just how they showed in so much detail the background characters from all of the uh, places because they visit so many towns. That was really cool to see. Um, 
few too many storyboards for my liking because because those storyboards there's so many little images and they're so small you don't really get as much appreciation out of them as say those two page uh, kind of splash uh, images for, from poor background shots that open chapters that's kind of more what you want from a big book like this you don't want really small images I wish that certain characters had more focus like I pointed out but overall it is it is a very good book it is definitely very good um, I definitely say you know order it online try and get it for as cheap as possible um, uh, it's not like don't rush out and buy it no matter the cost just get it for as cheap as you can I'd say I'm pretty sure the book is also available digitally. I think Dark Horse recently sent an email out saying that this book is now available, available digitally if you have Dark Horse Digital. But uh, yeah, that has been my review for The Legend of Korra, Art of the Animated Series, Book 3, Change. I believe the Book 4 art book is coming out uh, in August or September. I can't remember the date off the top of my head, but I definitely will be getting that. I'll, again, I'll try and get it as soon as I can. But um, I'm, I'm interested in that one because obviously what it's going to have is new designs for most of the characters because of the three year time skip. Um, you've got a bit more spiritual stuff towards the end. You've got the Colossus as a very interesting uh, design. They'll probably focus more on Kuvira and stuff like that as well. So there's a lot of stuff coming up that I'm very interested to see, especially stuff towards the end, like what they do with the whole, all the Korasami scenes, and do Michael Brown comment about that towards the end of that book. I'm really excited to see what that's about and what they uh, talk about in, in that book. But uh, yeah. So while I'd say this is the weakest uh, of the art books so far, I still think it's pretty good. So that's been a review. Thanks for watching, and bye.